We are back with another video, back with some more positivity. Because I can't lie, United, two wins in our last two games now, winter break, certain people are still crying. <laughs> I'm crying forever. I'm good, man. I'm good. I'm looking forward to this. I like that you got the training top. Remind me of the Champions League thing we were wearing, I think, yeah. away to Villarreal in a warm-up. Yeah, sick. But um, yeah, sad. good times, but sad times, man. My, my pillow remains. My severe shirt is going to be on order next week once I see the number. Oh, so you, you're ordering it? I'm getting a severe shirt. It's going to be either there or it's going to be getting worn. You know, I might even have to wear it back to front, just have Martial on nine just here instead <laughs> back to front. This guy and is then, shameless, um, you know. I'm ready. I'm ready for July the 1st when he's back in and a new manager. And we'll talk about that later. He's not going. He's not. He's not right, let me just play the clip again. Can we pretend that up there it's in the night sky like shooting stars? I can really use a wish right now. There's hope. Loan without obligation to buy. There is hope. Okay, okay let's quickly touch on Marshall here. I remember saying before the January transfer window, I think Marsha to Sevilla will be a good move. Did man, I called I, it. I didn't even agree with you as well. Yeah, and I still stand by. I think Sevilla four points away from Real Madrid They're in the title yeah. challenge. I still think Marsha can play up front or on the left for Sevilla. He can make a claim there, and they still got Europa League football. Mm. And with United, it's not an obligation to buy. There's no option to buy. A new manager comes in, which could potentially still be Lopetegui because he was on the list the other day. Yep. The severe manager right now. Yep. And Marsha can fight for his place again if he wants it in the summer. Yeah. What do you think? 100%. Of it? Yeah. Um, I think the names that have been linked to Manchester United, when it's Lopetegui, Luis Enrique, Pochettino, Ten Hag, one thing I like about them is that one, they have a real style of play. And mainly it's focused towards having the ball as well. It's a lot of possession football. And I've always said that Martial, Pogba, Van der Beek, Sancho, these are players that we've got that have got sick, you know, technical security, can retain the ball, and we need a manager that's going to suit them players. Now, if Pogba leaves or not, okay, that he goes. But we've got a team there that's got stars that are ready to play possession football. So I think any of them four would like Martial. They'd be a fan of Martial. And it's just whether he wants to come back and fight for his place with Cavani gone. Hopefully we don't get another forward, and that would free him up to compete with Ronaldo and also compete on the left or you know, left-hand side. So, yeah, let's see what manager does come in. But I do feel like if he wants to stay, he's got a chance because they're possession-based coaches. Because one thing I would say about Martial in the summer and stuff, like everyone said United might be in for a striker, but clearly we're not going to get Erling Haaland. The Vlahovic yep. deal now, it looks like he's going Juventus. So yep. that's another striker ruled out. Who else are United really going to get up front? Can I throw two days out there? One we're not going to like, one you might like. Oh. So I, think Ale I think Alexander Isaac's a good shout. I think that's that has more Arsenal written over it now. Yeah, I agree. But I wouldn't be surprised if Manchester United went in for someone like that of mm. that profile. The other one, I don't like it, but this is Manchester United all over. We score and slap 50 million on Calvert Lewin. Nah, I don't think Ralph will. I, I, I don't think he would, but I hope they're going away from this sort of English prodigy type style mm. player now. But it just wouldn't surprise me that Manchester United go and bid for Calvert Lewin and we're left raging again i'm not saying i want us to no way do i want us to but it wouldn't even surprise me man united make shock 50 million pound bid for calvert lewin i'll be like oh my god oh my god but i do think we're quite limited in terms of strikers i don't think dembele is really kicked on the one that's beyond at leon either um i'm looking at strikers across europe like yeah, you you know something that could be mad yeah you see icardi like United are that type of club here that we need a backup striker to Cristiano Ronaldo. Let's go and sign another old player, another player that's let's be honest, hasn't really kicked on at PSG. I don't like him. Yeah, I'll be honest, right yeah. now I don't want him, but I can see United being linked with him. Because remember, yeah, I think uh, even this window United were linked with him. Yeah, we were, we were. I, I just don't feel like he's hit it off in, in France. And I feel like he as he gets older, he's the type of player that needs to go to a team that's gonna play slower football. So I wouldn't even be surprised, right? if we saw someone like Roma with Mourinho going for Icardi, mm. that type of move might go well with him. Him and, you know, Abraham battling up front, bit similar back-to-goal profile as well, can score in the box. 
I think, yeah, someone like Roma could look at him, but I, I don't want him. I feel like yeah. Martial gives us that sort of see, that technical ability, but also he can run in the channels, he can link up the play better. Um it's going to be interesting, man. I'll be honest, with the Martial departure, I've said this, yeah, I did want to see a Martial, Ronaldo, Sancho front three for slight, like for more time. I know we saw against Villarreal, that's a shame. And we won 2-0. But at the same time, he wants to leave, you can't really stop him. He's taken a pay cut to leave, so fair play to Anthony Martial. He just no, wants to a pay cut. He hasn't? Nah, 240 grand, they're playing it a week. Swear down. Yeah, yeah, no loan fee, but they're paying the full salary. They're paying the full wage. That's why they no, did to pay oh, a loan fee. Run. They're not paying the loan fee because they're going to pay the full wage. That makes sense. Okay, that kind of makes sense. Yeah, 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 yeah. So like, fair play. Like, he's leaving, getting game time. Can't really complain. In it, it's a good move. Hopefully, he can win a league with Sevilla and yeah. come back and kick but, on. Because you know, you know, you know what's what? mad? It, it, it makes me thinking, excited to watch the Liga now. You know. Yeah, 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 I was thinking this. You know, when you're actually deep here, Marsha could fully end up with a Champions League medal with United. If we win a Champions League, a Europa <laughs> League medal with Sevilla, a Europa League league title with Sevilla, you, you know, all I'm saying that you could win three yeah, trophies yeah. by the end of this year. You know what's mad as well? I was looking at Sevilla's result on the weekend. They were 2 0 down to Celta Vigo, come back and do mm-hmm. 2 all, and Real Madrid are 2 0 down to Elche and come back and do 2 all. So it shows that they're, you know, there's a lot to fight for. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to say it right now Martial to score on his debut. Martial to score on his debut. We'll Babe, see what happens. There. We'll see what and happens. Then, and then I'm just going to go on Twitter with the shirt and just hold it like this. I'm here. You're signing. <laughs> Time to get new haters. Martial SC oh, still here. Days. Nah, nah, nah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that, that's one thing, yeah, that's, uh, that I'm kind of happy with more with Martial leaving because the amount of Martial FC, hate, uh, FC members that come at me every single day, at least I can kind of relax now. Yeah, but the same with the Ronaldo thing. Obviously, that's that got, that's going to put the pressure more on your boy because he's got to now stand up and deliver. I said I don't it to think you it is. at the start. I was just having a shower yet, and I was actually thinking about it. I said to you at the start of the season, Max Ronaldo, fifteen to seventeen league goals for me. How many is he on? Eight. There we go. And everyone laughed at me. Thirty. He's guaranteed twenty-five goals. Six scorer. in the Champions Hit, man. League. Best goal scorer in the last ten years. I said fifteen to seventeen league goals. Different Premier League now. Different type of Manchester United. And my priest in the pudding. So we're going to do a show about it if he does not get over 17. Even the football terrorists laughed at me. They all laughed. I said, we'll see, come, mate. We'll see. We'll see what happens. But come on, mm. let's talk about Ralph now. Because I can't lie. I've mm. been feeling quite positive about United. Like, I think I tweeted the other day, Paul Pogba coming back. Martial made an impact at that point. Rush mm. was 2-2 two two now. Like, there's small baby steps that we're taking towards Ralph. We're controlling games a lot more, a lot more now. Mm. And what, what else? Defensively, we look a lot better. One loss, loss post Ole Gunnar Solskjaer now. Even yep. though I'm not saying we won every single game, we have the second most points in the Premier League since Ralph took over behind Manchester City. Okay. So like, even though like, he hasn't been clean sailing, we haven't won every single game, he hasn't been three, four nils every single game, he's doing something right. What do you make of Ralph's time so far? Um, I think, as you said perfectly, is that it's getting better the longer he's in charge. I think one thing with Manchester United is that the demand is so high. Like, you want to come in and fans want instant results, instant impact. But when you look at the football we played under Oli and you look at the start of the season we had under Oli, we had to realise and rein it in that, do you know what, Ralph's coming in and as much as we think we know the players, he doesn't know these players at all apart from two or three, maybe like Varane and Ronaldo and Cavani. Other than that, he's, still, he's getting to know these players. He's getting to know their profiles and what style of football they like and He's got to then implement his style of football onto these players. Now, it's like going to it's like going to school and your teacher leaving, and then you get in a supply teacher, and then you find out you know the supply teacher is going to be staying for the rest of the year. They teach in different ways. Some teachers get more out of you, some teachers don't. But you've got to adjust to their methods. And this is professional football. Think of the schedule we had. Ralph came in, and there was a game like every three days, so we didn't get to train. He also didn't get training ground because I had to close that because of COVID. Mm-hmm. So when you look and painting a picture of what he's had at the start to what he's had now, time to train, to have little gaps in between the games, the results and individual performances are actually getting better. So you could put hand in hand that having time on the training ground, having time to rest, have then accumulated to better performances in terms of, okay, it's not amazing, but we are looking a bit more solid and controlling games a little bit more better. But also individuals that were under threat, like Diogo Dallo, for example, have thrived, have, you know, come in, listened, taken on his methods and have improved. And I think, you know, with that, 
I'm excited to see what happens after this with this winter break because I even feel like little things like Rafael Varane, for example. I think him and Dallow on that right-hand side have been a joy to watch. You look at Dallow and what happened to him against Villarreal, how he's now responded five, six weeks later. And you've got Varane, who, if that was Oli, probably rushes him back and plays him in the Burnley game. What did Ralph do? Play him against Newcastle and said, right, the midweek game against Burnley, you're not going to play. And rested him and gave him 20 minutes at the end because Eric Bailly came off. Now, that little you know detail has made a massive impact. Because Varane, Varane, is, Varane is still fit. I feel like he is just getting better and better and better. If you look at his performances, I think Varane has got, you know, the next level in him. I think it was about maintaining his fitness and getting him to kick on because I'm excited to see what happens after the international break or winter break, you want to call it, with him. Because I think we haven't seen the best of Varane yet and he's signed for 50 million and I think there's there's more to come. So overall, that over Varane I like and, and the team's improving because he's had time on the pitch, training pitch. I think the centre-back position now under Ralph is very, very interesting because I'm looking at all like the main three centre-backs in Varane, Lindelof and Maguire. They've all recently performed. Like Lindelof, obviously, unfortunate what happened with his house and started being burgled. That's why he missed out. Mm. But Maguire came back in and I'll be honest, I thought that was Maguire's best performance of the season so far. Yeah, it was good. I think he lunged in a few times and luckily he mm. won the ball. There was a couple I was like, oh, like if he misses him, it's a red card. But um, it was a game where I think someone I saw tweet it and, it, and it, it was bang on. I think Maguire, he said, Maguire for the first time is playing like he knows he's under pressure. Mm. And, and I think that's what made Maguire step up. He, you know, he was better in 1v1 situations against Antonio a couple of times. And he was good on the ball. And I, and I feel like he knows now that his place is, is not as safe what it was under Oli with the captain's armband. I feel like Varane is the nailed on centre-back. I'll be honest with you, I think Varane is number one. But Lindelof and Maguire are now battling it for the top two. And I think his comments at Ralph of saying Maguire is captain when he plays shows to me and you and the rest of the fans that no one's guaranteed starter, even if you're captain or not. If you're not on the pitch, Maguire, Bruno will be the captain. If Bruno, if you're not on the pitch, Ronaldo or Popo will be the captain. De Gea will be the captain. So... We've got five leaders in terms of what Ralph thinks. So, if anything, that's going to benefit Maguire. But I, I, I'm still not a Maguire fan. Never will be. But if you play... Yeah, yeah by the way, when I say that... Course, yeah, we're not, yeah, you're not a Maguire fan, of course. Yeah. But, of course, we've got, to, we've got to give him credit if he plays well. And he did on Saturday. Now, I thought it was literally like a 7 out of 10 performance. A solid performance mm. from Harry Maguire. And I haven't really said that this season, which is why I'm like, you know what? Fair play. Give credit where it's due, hopefully. I'll be honest, I still want to see the Varane and Lindelof partnership going forward. Mm. Probably the same as you right now. But yeah. at the same time, if Maguire can continue these performances, I'm not really going to complain, am I? No. It's, it's interesting. When I look at games like Atletico Madrid, like when it's a... Because the league, I feel like, will rotate a couple times anyway. But mm. with like the Champions League where it's anyone's competition this season and we've got two legs against Atletico Madrid, who did he go with? Varane and Lindelof or Varane and Maguire? That's going to be the game where if both of them or all three are fit, I'm going to be like, who's he selecting? That's going to be one of the big games. I'll, I'll be, I'll feel like if we play, like who we got after the international, uh, who we got after the winter break? We, Middlesbrough after... in their fake up. Okay. So if Lindelof plays that and then Maguire plays the next one, I feel like they're just rotating. So. And then I think yeah, it's Burnley. And then Bernie, see? So Maguire will probably play that because of the physicality. So I feel like the Atletico Madrid game will be a game where it's like, right, Ralph is picking his best team. Mm. Do you get what I'm saying? Pogba back as well. And that should be interesting because I can't lie. There has been like a couple plays where I'm like, you know what? I doubt with them under the previous manager a lot. And don't get me wrong, I still got massive question marks. But I can slowly see them improving. And one of the players is Scott McTominay, in my eyes. Like, I'm, by the way, before anyone gets this wrong, I'm not saying Scott McTominay should be starting for Manchester United week <laughs> in, week out. <laughs> I'm not saying he's a world-class <laughs> midfielder, but I'm saying he's slightly improving from what I saw on the Oligan Social. Don't you think it's funny that me and you are exactly the same? Whenever we talk of Maguire or McTominay mm. and praise him a little bit, we feel we have to justify yeah, it. Yeah, no, yeah, no. Like, like, mad, no, no. I know he's not the best, but all I'm saying, I've seen improvements in his game. And I, I'll be honest, when Ralph went to the 4-3-3, I was heavily critical. And I'm like, there's only one man that can play the holding midfield position. And that's the man in match. And don't get me wrong, I'm still not convinced on Scott McTominay in the sixth row, even starting here and there. But he, he's done all right so far. What do you think? I'm mixed. Like, if you look at the Brentford game before that, you know, him and Fred, 
out battled in the first half, not winning the second balls. And then in the second half, they're winning the second duels. I feel like McTominay was given the freedom to sort of go more box to box. I'm not really content with him. As much as he's improved and he, he he's playing well under Ragnik, I don't feel like number six is where we should be playing him I anyway. Um, I just feel like with McTominay, what he gives you off the ball is that like he can press, he can try and pinch the ball back. What he gives me on the ball is what I feel is like the ball carrying. You know, he can he can get the ball from just inside the centre circle and dribble past a couple of men and sort of bulldoze his way through. And then the pitch kind of opens up. And I feel like he's good when he's galloping with the ball or he's playing a bit more advanced. What I watch when he plays in the sixth role and we, you know, we build up from the back is that I feel like positionally, he doesn't know where to be. He kind of like tiptoes up that way. He said the right back's got it. He tiptoes over. Then he just top tiptoes back if the centre back's got it. And then tiptoes over to the left hand side and like when the left back's got it. And I feel like he's not like Jorginho who will be like, right, give me the ball. I'm gonna take it on a half turn and I'm gonna control mm. the game or I'm gonna I'm gonna spray a pass. So I feel like he's played okay, but it's not something that I'm gonna be like, yeah, this is what Manchester United need to build on going forward. He's doing the job because we're winning games, but I still think like he's been average. I think the best part of him is being able to sort of when he's galloped forward and it's like, oh my God, and there's a Manchester United midfielder actually running through the middle. Van der Beek doesn't really do that. He's not a ball carrier. Fred doesn't really have the burst of speed or the strength to get through, man. The Manny Matic doesn't do that. So the only player that does that for us is Paul Pogba. So when he's not playing, McTominay is the only one that stands. Bruno doesn't even do it. So McTominay is the only sort of ball carrying centre midfielder. So when he does it now, it looks like, oh my God, he's doing something that, you know, the others don't do. So I, I don't know. It's like a handicap in him, or he's been oh wow, he's been that great. You know, but but, but do you think he's slightly improving under Ralph? Like with his passing and stuff. Um, he sprayed some good passes out wide. I see. I think the game mm. against the, the, the main game I see that was against Aston Villa. Aston Villa Cup, yeah. Right, yeah. Rashford was Rashford. getting in a lot of one v one duels, and I, I did like it. I feel like McTominay's confidence and belief is growing. One thing I do give McTominay credit for. And, like, people laugh and say, oh, that like passion and desire. But I'll be honest with you, like, forget his footballing ability, the professional side of him and his mentality in terms of, like, just giving 100%, you know, not causing a fuss in the media, cracking on with his job, working hard, setting an example. As much as I don't like him, really, he does do that. Mm. And, and I don't feel like Manchester United are in a position right now where we can afford to sort of like, sell. as much as I'd want to sell McTominay because I don't think he's good enough, I don't think we're in a position to sell him because there's not enough characters like him. So it, we're, we're kind of in a catch-22 where I wouldn't be surprised if McTominay's 24 now and he's still at the club when he's 28, even though he might not be good enough. But just because what he brings us in terms of that sort of character, that professionalism, you know, a Scottish international, yes, he's not that great, but that side goes a long way with these managers right now. And I feel like Manchester United are lacking more attitude-wise Scott McTominay's. Well, one player I would say is kind of like that. He's probably your replacement for the man behind you, and that's Alanga. Because I can't yeah. lie, he's, yeah. he's, he's, you see with Alanga? Mm. I know that like, in terms of technically, he's not the best. He's never really going to be a top 10 winger in the league. But I, I can't lie, I've been impressed with him. In terms of, I feel like He's Ralph's dream kind of thing. Like, he's a, he's like a teacher's pet. He will do what Ralph mm. says to do. And I feel like what I said with Rashford in terms of when Rashford was playing out wide, I was heavily critical because he wasn't helping a fullback out. He wasn't doing the basics right in my eyes, Rashford, mm. towards the end when he's struggling and stuff. Mm. Whereas I feel like Elanga does it. And Elanga keeps the ball relatively well. Like, in terms of, he won't be silly in terms of Rashford running into four or five people who just recycle the ball. Yeah, 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 yeah. He would rather just pass it backwards and say, right, let's start again. And be sensible with it. I guarantee, um, yeah. You see, Ricky, he loves Elanga. I can guarantee you that for a fact. What? You reckon? I think he does. I think he would. Like, I haven't yeah, heard his opinions just, on it, but I think he would like it. Yeah. Because he does we, keep we, we, the team shape relatively well. Yeah, he does. He does. Do you know what? Like, I don't want us to chuck a big burden on him. I think the club needs to use him correctly. Like, I was glad... Mm. When I saw in the 60th minute he came off for Marcus Rashford against West Ham, because I thought, okay, you've done your thing against Brentford, but let's keep it realistic now. Just because you've done well against Brentford, or actually I'll say your performance was average, but you scored, don't now overdo it and feel like he's going to be the hero. Mm -hmm. He took him off, and I think it's about using him correctly because you don't want to burn him out. And you also don't want to do, you know, a crazy thing to a 19, 20-year-old where he's played in the under-23s, all of a sudden, never looking under Raleigh, gets a start under Ralph, 
and his life kind of flips upside down and everyone's demanding that he scores every game or he's mm. going to be the be all and end all. I think what we need to do is just manage him correctly. I do think he's a bright player. I do think he has the right application and mentality. Like you said, he will listen to Ralph. He would do what he says. And I think Ralph needs that right now when we're in a results business and we're trying for top four and we've still got the Champions League. But of course, he is probably third or fourth choice on the pecking order. But at the end of the day, if you're doing the right things and working hard and, you know, you're getting, you're deserving your starts, then obviously so be it. It doesn't matter about age and experience. But I just feel like, yeah, we need to nurture him correctly. Um, and I trust Ralph to do it because look at Ralph's track record with youngsters. And yeah, stuff, isn't it? exactly. I, I really do. I don't, do I think Alanga in three years time is going to be like a Manchester United star Starting and he's going to be a regular? I, I, I honestly, I sadly, I don't think he's cut out to be a Manchester United player. I think, you know, when you look at Martial, just an example, Martial Sancho and what they were like at 1920, like the balance, the, the way they use the ball, the ability, the confidence, you know, that sort of, whoa, they're going to be like a top player. And Langa doesn't really give me that. He sort of gives me good running and energy vibes. But I, I think ball, not enough. like three, four years time, the only way your Langa will be here will be as a squad player. Yeah. And that's just because of his mindset and his application in terms of he will follow what the manager says. And let's be honest, like, you, you do need a couple of them in a the squad. Yeah. They're not expected. They, like, let's be honest, Alango probably knows he's not good enough to start right now, week in, week out. But I'll be happy to be on the bench because he play, he's playing for Manchester United. Yeah. And, boy, and when team... called upon, he will do all right. Yeah. Do you think, yeah, so players like Alanga, you see how Jesse's still here, Rashford, Greenwood will be here for probably for a long time. Do you feel like Manchester United as a club sh- don't like or struggle, should I say? So it's either don't like or struggle to sell players that come through their academy. Like, I, I don't think it's a struggling thing. I feel I like think Manchester United that... cling on to the players sometimes a bit too long. I, I just think United you know, just pay too, like the wages are too high and other clubs mm. are not willing to take them. Now, let's be yeah. honest here, like someone like Jesse, don't get me wrong, I love Jesse Lingard, didn't it? But in terms of his overall brand at Manchester United has grown because he's, he's Manchester United for and through. He's gone through the academy, let's be honest. Mm. Same thing where you could argue with Marcus Rashford. Manchester born and bred is in the song. That, yeah. That's why I think United just struggle. We pay silly wages to them. And I'm not being critical that they're being paid a lot. I'm just saying our overall wage structure as a whole, it's just messed up, isn't it? Yeah. Because let's be honest, like, you look at someone like Axel. I, I, I think Zabie. wages play a part, yeah. But I, yeah, because Axel's a good shout, but he's never really had a look in really. I think, I think wages play a part. And the club are also scared about selling someone and then they end up becoming a star at another team. I don't know, man. Like, I look at someone like Axel Toon and say, be gone. Fossil Mentor, gone. Like, if we're realistically mm. talking, even like, remember Josh Harrop? Yeah, yeah. Whoa, which he scored, or something, didn't he? Yeah, he scored on his debut, I think it was. Mm. Like, last game of the season and he was gone straight away kind of thing. Yeah. So I don't think yeah. United really should, like, kind of hold on to them. Because let's be honest, like, if United were clever, or if United really wanted to cling on, they would have given Josh Harrop a new contract. He would have stayed. Yeah. And there you go. Yeah, you probably could be, he probably still could be here. So if anything, you'd flip it around and probably say it's harder to get into the first team rather than, yeah, rather than us, yeah, struggling to sell. Yeah, no, it's interesting. That's the only thing I worry about, like I said, going back to like the McTominay, like, yes, he's done well under Ragnick and let's see what he does under a new coach. Because I don't think he's good enough I feel like he's still going to be a player like Jesse that's going to be stuck here in four years' time. And it's like, we should have just moved you on a long time ago. But then again, you said it, it's the balance of having players that, you know, we think is good enough, but also having a few that know the club inside out and will give that 100% application. Because then that probably keeps the the other players that think they should be starters every week on their toes because they're giving 100%, like we see with Alanga. Yeah, as much as he's come through the academy, he's starting over Rashford, Sancho, Agree with obviously playing the other side, but it's because his application's there and he wants to mm-hmm. play. So, yeah, sometimes you need a few of them um, pushing it, really. Um, I think De- Diogo Dallo is one I wanted to touch on, and I'm deliberately saying it because, obviously, our biz is not here. Change his shifts, obviously, you can't make it. But do you remember when you were saying about Dallo and Biz was not having it and he was back in one massacre? I was Start of the say, season. I, sh- yeah. I need to bring back the clips, you know. Because I was heavy yeah, on Dallo starting. You might people, have to. You've got to be a think, catalog because you and Biz were going at it. Yeah, because I remember people were coming at me in the comments. Oh, Dallo, Wambasaka is still better than Dallo. 
Mm, and I got to give you credit because I don't think Dallow's the, the the next right back for the five six years. He could be he's still young, but don't forget how young he is. He's like 22, 23. I'll be honest, I think he is. He, he could be, yeah, exactly. So Diego Dallow could be the right back for the next five six years from being out frozen, being at AC Milan mm. on loan. Um, but I've been really impressed with just his mentality of that Villarreal game. I think when you get a cooking like that, and I'll be honest with you, I've watched football a long time like you. And for 45 minutes, I've never seen a right back get roasted like that for a long time in a in a sort of, I'll say, an elite competition game. Mm. And that's Manchester United at Old Trafford. And I was really worried for him. And then, um, you know, we got taken out and rotated in the side. But since Ragnick's come in, he just seems to be breathing like that sigh of relief and the shoulders are relaxed. And I think Ralph is like, do you know what? I want to play attacking football. I want to press up high. So when Dallow is actually getting the ball, he's getting it more or less on the halfway line or further up. And I think that's allowing him to sort of impose himself on the game. I feel like Sancho, when he's come on, I feel like Greenwood, when they've got the ball on the right-hand side, they now know that someone's overlapping. It's, even if he's not getting the ball, he's a decoy. There's times that Wambasaka would even positionally know where to be. And he dilly-dallies on the ball. I feel like everything is... Much more quick of Dallow. He has a great fizzing pass into midfield as well. Can use his left foot, as we saw for the assist, the pre-assist for the Arsenal game when Ronaldo mm. scored. So um, I'm I'm happy with what Dallow is doing. It spells a very worrying sign for Aaron wan if I'm honest, because as much as he's been here two years now and he's shown that he is good defensively, there is games probably against Man City away. I would still start wan because I like him in 1v1 duels. But... Is it sustainable? And I feel like with wan I don't want to shoe, shoe Horman under and say he's shit. I don't think he's shit. I think wan is a good right back, but I just don't know if it's going to be at Manchester United. I don't think the style of play and the way these po- these coaches are that we're looking at, the possession-based coaches suit him. So I feel like wan could be really under threat. And, and if it's Dallow and then Ethan there to come back and compete for the right back spot, I'm more than happy to have a year of seeing what they can do together, developing before we go and spend money on a, a Mukieli from Leipzig or something like that. I think in the nicest possible way to wan the thing I say, he's a Premier League right back. He can play mm-hmm. in the Premier League. He's proven it. Palace did very, very well. United, he's done relatively all right. Mm. But is he the standard that you're going to be taking to the Champions League week in, week out? Yeah. When you're playing all sorts of teams, like I'm talking... Young boys, for example, you want to see your Diego Dallo play. Mm. He's not that guy. Don't get me wrong. He will have the performances defensively at times, like he has against Neymar and Mbappe, I think he was. Yeah. But at yeah, the same yeah, time, yeah. more often than not, a club like Manchester United, a club like Manchester City, a club like Liverpool are not going to be starting him. Mm. So I think in the summer, we probably should, if we can part ways in my eyes, if a good offer comes in, maybe bring Ethan Lear back for competition. I would do yeah. it. What would you say I... about Ethan Laird, though? If they get promoted Bournemouth, would you send them back on loan there for a season for the yeah, Premier League? I can't, I can't. I would. Unless yeah. he's getting guaranteed like 15 games in all competitions for United, for me, just loan him. The only reason yeah. I say that, I'd rather him start 38 games in the Premier League or like upwards of 30 for Bournemouth and stuff, innit? But sorry to interrupt you. I know we're, we're recording mm. anyway. Tottenham have submitted an official bid for Luis Diaz, which is exciting. The FC Porto winger. And United have apparently rejected a low move again for Jesse Lingard. Um, that's what the... the From Newcastle? Said. Yeah. Uh, let's mm. see what happens. Crystal Palace mean. and Crystal Palace still want to sign Donny van der Beek on loan. No obligation or option to buy. I think that's yeah. sensible, isn't it? Yeah. But yeah, I was going to say this in Diego Dallo as well. Remember when me and Biz were having those debates? Mm. And I said something was like, defensively, other than 1v1 duels, I don't think there's much in, in between them. Yeah. And I can't lie. I think Dalo, you could argue, is better defensively other than the 1v1 duels than wan Because I'm yeah, seeing back yeah. post, wan- uh, Diego Dalo, Aero duels. He's brilliant in the year, by the way. He, he, has it, he has it on look. Yeah. I think like, he's wan- quite tall for a right back. You know? I think he's yeah, about yeah. six foot one. Yeah, but like he has it on look. Like, I, I feel so much confident in a weird way defensively at times with with Diego Dallo still. Mm. Like, as much as we want to praise him going forward and stuff and his progressive passes and all of that, defensively, I feel like he deserves his flowers. And I think yeah. Ralph even touched on it the other day. It was like, he, I think he said, like, don't get me wrong, Diego Dallo still needs to improve defensively. Yeah. But he's still doing very, very well. 
Yeah, yeah. He said even he, like, he classes him as an offensive fullback, same yeah. as Tellen. And he looks at Luke Shaw and Wamba Saka as a bit more defensive. I think mm. if I still had to pick my favourite pairing, I'd go with Shaw and Dallow. I like Tellez and what he's done. I think he has been solid. He's given you 7 out of 10s, which sometimes is all you want from your wing-back. But I feel like with Luke Shaw, he has a bit more of them driving runs on the ball. The ability carrying to the ball. Get, get beyond the end. Yeah, beyond his man and carry the ball. And I get, I get Dallow can do that. And sometimes you want someone that's a bit different. That Tellez can cross from deep a bit like Trent. Dallow can, you know, gallop a bit more forward. But I just feel like, yeah, Shaw and Dallow just give us a bit more something in, in, in total. But I can't really fault Tellez because I feel like Tellez is a much more better plan B than what wan is. Do you get what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like there's a debate Tellez on that left-hand side. side. There's no debate on the right-hand side. But one thing I would say on the left-hand side, and I tweeted this the other day, I'm not convinced by both of them, I'll be honest. Mm. I look at Tellez and I'm like, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying Tellez is getting cooked week in, week out. He's putting yeah. in decent performances. That's all it is for me. When Luke mm. Shaw comes back, if both are firing, I think Luke Shaw's better. Yeah. But I still look at Luke Shaw's inconsistencies over his seven, eight years at United. I'm like, oh, I still don't trust you. I don't know whether you're going to get injured the next week. That's why I'm kind of like with both of them. Don't get me wrong. I think one should be kept in the summer. But if I had the opportunity, I would sign a left back in the summer. Do you know what? That's funny. Then. So if you, if we say realistically, a new manager mm. comes in and we have three positions... That we sign in. What are your three positions? Midfielder. Like kind of six. Narrow it down a little bit. So what, like a six? Six. It's tough, you know. I think centre back, we're relatively fine, I'll be honest, for another season. Ethan Lear comes back, we're fine at right back. Left back, step forward position then. And then probably another midfielder. But it also depends on the Paul Pogba situation as well. Yeah, if Pogba goes, 100% two midfielders. One mm. minute, the Manny matches legs are down. I think if Pogba stays, I would potentially go with... maybe we still got Van der Beek as well, isn't it? Yeah, Van der Beek. And I think the next mm. manager could get a tune out of him. So if Pogba stays, I'll go with one midfielder. I'd go with a goalkeeper. I agree. Yeah, a goalkeeper, a number six, and... Yeah, maybe a left back. If Pogba stay, if Pogba does mm. leave, I'll go two midfielders and a goalkeeper. Um, as much as Saeed, big up Saeed, he likes David De Gea. And also there's Dean Henderson there. I don't think Dean Henderson is cut out to be a Manchester United goalkeeper. I think he needs to move on. And I think De Gea's time has just come to an end. I know we touched on it quite a bit last week, but I just don't feel like he gives us enough. I feel like he's a good shot stopper, but there are other good shot stoppers out there. But mm. what other keepers have is they're either very good on the ball like Edison, who starts attacks and is a massive focal point for Man City, or you have an Edward Mendy, where you command your area, you come out and you claim, and your physical presence. I don't think shot stopping is enough, so I wouldn't mind a new keeper. Not saying that there's loads out there that I can think of off the top of my head. However, I wouldn't mind in a like the Brighton keeper, AC Milan keeper, like yeah, Mike in eight months' time, I wouldn't mind seeing another keeper. Mm. Even Sanchez, Brighton's actually okay. Mm. Mm. But I do think the left back position is something that we should be looking at. Like I'm looking at someone like Theo Hernandez, for example. And yeah. I think he's signing a five year contract with AC now, which is a bit unfortunate. But he's been balling out differently, kind of thing, isn't it? Oh, is over he the now? last two years. 26, maybe. I think he might be 24. I swear. Yeah, 24. Would... Yeah. Okay. So, like, he has age on his side. He's performing to a good enough level. Was that real? He's going to be minimum, minimum 50 million then. Yeah, but I'll be honest, like... That's, not, that's, that's, that's what you pay for a solid win yeah. back nowadays. Like, how much did Kyle Walker go for 50 million pounds? Yeah. Can I throw a spanner in the works? Would you look at Renan Lodi from Atletico Madrid? You know what? I actually don't think he's that bad. But it's just mm. about him. Like, obviously, last season, very, very unfortunate with the amount of minutes he got and stuff, innit? Yeah. But he, he's I... only at 22, is he now? 22, I think... 23. I, I think there's I think there could be a player in there. I really do. I don't think someone like El, I don't I don't want someone like eight Nori or anything like that. I do no, I, I, like... I remember with Renan Lodi, yeah, I did like a fire player to watch out for in the Copa America, innit? Oh really? And he was in it. Yeah, he's like quite five quick youngsters. Well, he's for. quite quick, isn't he? Mm. Like obviously last year was he was just a bit more unfortunate with obviously Atletico switching systems and stuff. They use yeah. Carrasco at wing back at times. 
Yeah, but I, I think, think he, he could be an interesting could be someone. One. I feel I, I don't feel like he's a he's a player that Atletico Madrid would refuse to sell because he's mm. not a guaranteed starter. And with his age, being twenty three, being a Brazilian as well, technically he's going to be sound. I think he could be a, a, an attacking fullback is what a lot of people go for now. I think he should be someone that we could look at potentially as a as a left left back. I'm about to talk or, you, or even maybe like someone like Cucurella. He's like performing him. at a, he's performing at a decent level for Brighton. I'm Don't really, get me wrong. Like, he's solid, you know. Yeah. Like, I even, in mind v, even in one v one duels, mm-hmm. he's actually pretty good, man. Like he doesn't get beaten a lot. And I'll be honest, the way the modern day football's going, you'd rather have an attacking fullback than a defensive fullback, especially yeah. like at Manchester United and stuff, innit? Yep. We see, we see it all the time, which is why there are left backs out there. United, Ralph, go find a gem or go find yeah. a ready made player. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There is. I see mm. in the Milano, obviously, looking at Gosens today mm. as well. Yeah, I saw that. That would be a brilliant signing for them, you know. <laughs> yeah, you know what? With, 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 who they got there in the moment? They've got Perry Fitch and Darmian. That's a massive upgrade. A natural mm. left footer as well. I do think Man United need to start being brave and stop. You know what? You could even say the same for Martial, but it's kind of hoping that players are going to fulfil their potential. And I feel like Luke Shaw is one of them. Alex Tellers is 29 now. So I do feel like there's a gap for us to to exploit that market, man. So let's see what the new manager does come in and do, because obviously we've seen today that he's not even put a buyback option on, obviously Mark, they've not put a buy clause on Martial. Van der Beek, if he does go, no buy option, because they want the new manager to have a, a fresh look at the squad, which, I, that, which is what that, I love. Yeah, because I'll be honest, if I'm United... Let Donny Van der Beek or Crystal Palace. Yeah. Let him go. Because that's when Crystal Palace ain't challenging for top four over with us. Yeah. They're just a mid table side. And they play all right football, though. Exactly. And let's be honest, like, don't get me wrong, Crystal Palace are playing very well, Conor Gallagher and stuff, but he still starts in the midfield. Yeah. Over someone like Jeffrey Schlupp, for example, when he plays there. Yeah. Premier League football until then now, until the end of the season. New manager comes in, probably does like Donny van der Beek, according to the managers that we'll be linked to, which we'll touch on. Perfect. Yeah. He's not used that United at all. You can't complain. Do you, do you not... I, I, I like the move. I think it's guaranteed play time. I do like the Football Palace playing and it sort of relieves him off pressure and it also keeps him... He keeps him fit. It keeps him ready because when he comes back in pre-season, he's been getting nearly guaranteed 80, mm. 70 or 90 minutes every week. The only issue for me is like with someone like Donny van der Beek and the the ability he has, the you know pedigree he has to get to a semi final for Ajax in the Champions League, score valuable goals at Real Madrid, at Juve, and Spurs, Chelsea on the run, on the run up to that, to then go go to United and then go on loan to a team like Crystal Palace. And by the way, I'm not disrespecting Crystal Palace, great club, well done. In terms of the stature, fans, yeah. But does he want to go that low? I and mean, if there's if there's a clubs across Europe. Or whatever, like a Martial deal, Sevilla, them watching Gladbachs or Dortmund needing a midfielder. For I'll six be honest, months. I, I rather no, he goes no. Palace. The only reason really? I say that, yeah, is because there's all like with Donny van der Beek, there was an allegation that he can't play in the Premier League. He's not mm. physical enough, isn't it? Mm. So if he goes Palace, he and he performs, that's it, that's gone. There's no excuses there. Because everyone kept saying under Oli Gunnar Solskjaer, Donny van der Beek isn't physical enough. And he bulked up in the summer as well. Yeah. So, so there's no excuses not to play Donny well, Van Okay, let me ask you a question then. So if it wasn't Palace, if we're talking about teams that are, are better than Palace, or you'd say are bigger names, where would you like to see Donny go if it wasn't Palace? Obviously, Everton was a link before, wasn't it? Yeah, but I'll be honest, I ain't trying to send him Everton right now. Yeah, yeah, and I hear you in a free fall. <sighs> Ooh, who else? Yeah, if you want him to stay in the Prem. Newcastle, I'm not really trying to see him go. Mm-hmm. I agree. Uh, it's hard, isn't it? Mm. Aston Villa, you could argue, are comfy with midfielders now. Yeah, they've got... Yeah, yeah I agree. I, I think Palace is the best you know of the be? rest. Kind you, of it. It, I, I wouldn't actually mind seeing him at Brighton. Yeah, the potentially. Game play. Uh, the football they play, that that nice passing movement stuff, I think he'd be brilliant there. If it weren't Brighton, I think for me it would be Southampton, even though I know they haven't, you know, they haven't got um I think they're above Palace right now. The football with a four four two. I think they might be, but they play a bit more of a four four two. But mm. I feel like with Brighton, the midfielders they've got, like when Basima gets a quite a few injuries, they have Alzate playing in midfield, McAllister, you have like Pascal Gross. I do feel like Van der Beek adds that bit of class. 
to their team. Mm. If it was me and I was Graham Potter, if he's got the budget and he's got the ability to rotate his squad or whatever, I, I think Van der Beek there, I would be I would be excited to watch Brighton even more. I watch them anyway. Mm. But I'll be like, with Van der Beek there, I feel like it would show his qualities even more that people don't think he can play in the Prem. Fair, fair, fair. Mm. And I also wanted to touch on, I think there was a report by David Ornstein the other day where it was like, our four potential managers, Luis Enrique, mm-hmm. Ten Hag, Pochettino, and Julian Lopetegui. What are your thoughts on that? Because I can't lie, I saw the list, I was surprised in a positive way. Yeah, I like the list. I think like touching on it just at the start of the show, like we mm. said, is that one thing that they all have is that they like a possession style based football. And I feel like we've got good players that can play that. There's some players like Rashford and, you know, McTominay that might struggle a bit with that. However, oh, they, can willing, Misaka, they can be willing to learn, they can adapt and, you know, try and move forward. But one thing I want to see Manchester United do is control and establish the foothold on games. I think all their managers want to do that. They want to impose their style. Like, they're not going into games and they're worried about Pochettino, this is for a perfect example. People like not, might not want Poch, but I understand it that the club won him because he done very good at Southampton, imposed his style, done the same thing at Spurs and done brilliant at Spurs until it came to a sad end. And then at PSG, when I looked at the game, they played Man City in the group stages at the Etihad. Yes, they lost 2-1 or whatever, but he went there and he doesn't care who the opposition are. He's like, I'm going to play my football, win or lose. I'm playing my football. When PSG get the ball, they're actually pretty good on the ball, even though they haven't got the forwards to sort of help Pochettino's style. When the midfield and defence have got a ball, like I see nice triangles, I see what they're trying to do. Luis Enrique, I love the football Spain play. I thought they were unlucky not to beat Italy in the Euro semi-final. And then you've got Lepetegui, who is second with Sevilla in La Liga right now, above many top teams, you could say by name. And then you've got, obviously, um, who's the other one? So Lopetegui, you've got Poch. Ten Hag, and, and look at Ajax, conceded five goals mm. all season. Everyone's a big fan of Ten Hag. I'm a big fan of Ten Hag. The only issue for me is obviously the Dutch league. I expect them to win, even though I can't fault their record. But I do want to see how far and how deep they go in the Champions League. But again, all these managers are like, if you ask me to put them in an order of one, two, yeah, I was gonna do that. four, I go Luis Enrique first. Mm. I then go... I'm, I do, I'll be honest with you. I'm going to go Luis Enrique first, Ten Hag and Poch a joint second, and Lopetegui in third. No, no, don't boil it. Second, third. Let's do it. Um, I'll go. I'll go with Ten Hag just. Yeah, I'll go Luis Enrique, Ten Hag, Poch. Why would you Lopetegui. go Luis Enrique first? I really believe that, like, even well, he won a treble with Barcelona, I believe. I think mm-hmm. it was. Um, I don't think you know he's one of their managers that everyone looks at at Barcelona and says, "Oh my God, he's one of the greats or whatever." But he still won major competitions with Barcelona, and I think what he's done for me with a Spain team that looked in deterioration, a team that everyone was like, "Spain are going to be, you know, locked off for a few years now. They're going to massive rebuild." What he's done and the football he plays with them type of players, I'm like, do you know what? Man works with them only international breaks. He, he gets his style across there. He's on the touchline. He looks composed in his T-shirt. I like his aura. You know, he played at Barcelona as a left back. I just feel like he's a manager that, you know, if we were playing but, uh, Man City or we were playing Barcelona or Bayern Munich, I feel like he we can beat them. I just feel like with him and if he gets us playing a good football, we can beat them. I won't be scared of anyone. I feel like with Poch, if we go to City away, I still feel like we could cave in and still get pummeled. I don't know why. I don't feel like he's got that, like, I'm going to come in and win. The aura. Yeah, the aura. Ten Hag is kind of an unknown. That's why I'm 50-50 with him. He's like second choice. Lopetegui, I just don't think he's cut out for Manchester United. It failed at Real Madrid. I just don't. I feel like Sevilla, Dortmund and them sort of Roma and them sort of them second tier clubs suit him. So Mm. Enrique, for me, would be the punt, but obviously he's got the World Cup. But I, I, I think I think Spain play wicked football, man. I really love their football. What about you? My list is exactly the same. Is it? Yeah. Like the wow. only re- like with Lewis Enrique, the reason he's first for me, he's proven he can control big egos. He's done that in the past with Messi, Suarez, mm-hmm. Neymar. One mm-hmm. trophies at Barcelona at, at Spain with a let's be honest, a below par Spain. Should have won the Euros probably. Yeah, and they were creating chances for fun. It was just that they had people at like Avaro Morata up front missing chances. 
Yeah. And one thing I always say about Spain, that tactical switch where he had Pedri marking Jorginho, that was Jorginho's worst game in the tournament. Mm. So he saw the biggest strength in an opponent and adapted his style of play to counter it. And it worked yeah. down to perfection in my eyes. Yeah. And that's what you need when you're gonna face one of the best managers in the world in like people like Pep Guardi- um Pep Guardiola, Jurgen Klopp. Because he was a day yeah. up against uh, Roberto Mancini. Mm. And people say pe- people don't mind Roberto Mancini at United, let's be honest. Yeah, yeah, you're right. So that's where you have to be like, you know what? Pedigree. Yeah. I'm glad Se- we agree. I'll, I'll be excited. What's your second, third, and fourth? Second, I- I'll be honest, is Ten Hag. Yeah. Just but I think with Hennig and Poch is close, maybe people will lean towards Poch because of the Premier League experience. Mm. But I just think maybe Ten Hag has a slightly more higher ceiling as a manager. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, it would still be a risk seeing him out of the Ajax system, innit? And that's why yeah. Luis Enrique's first, for example. Poch yeah. third over Lopate just because of Premier League experience. And Lopate, in the nicest possible way, don't get me wrong, he's done very, very well at Sevilla, innit? Mm. At the same time, he failed at Real Madrid. Am I willing to take that risk on Lopate? Like, don't get me wrong, if Lopate comes in, I'm backing him, but I think Lopate is the biggest risk in the nicest possible way, isn't it? Yeah. Even though I do think he's a top manager, which is mm. why he would be lost. Yeah. It's mad that I we agreed on that, you, man. Say again? It's mad that we agreed on that. Yeah, we, you know, we yeah, did. Like, fully agreed as well, mm. like, proper. Yeah, man, I just... Do you know what? The the, the, the problem for me... Sorry, I'm just checking Adam. Um, mm. um, In regards to, like, the managers and and going forward, if despite our list, I feel like if you had to ask me who is most likely to come, I'd put Poch, Poch first. Yeah, I'll put Poch. I, then... I've got a question for you. Who would be your manager? Like, is that is the manager that you want on that list? Yeah, and that is Luis Enrique. Enrique, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I actually yes. think if you ask me about any manager that's available, not available, that has the opportunity or potential to still come, because Pep mm. and Klopp are not going to leave. Obviously, I think yeah, Luis Enrique, Ten Hag, and Poch are probably my top three. I'm not really a big fan of you know Roberto Mancini. I think if I had to throw a fourth name in there. It'll probably be Marco Rose. Yeah, face, face, he's at face. Dortmund. He's at Dortmund currently. So I think, yeah, I, I I know Dortmund are up and down, but I feel like with better players at his disposal, the way he plays the attacking philosophy, was very good at Salzburg as well. I think I'd go, yeah, Luis Enrique and then Poch Ten Hag and, and, and I'd throw Marco Rose in there. I know the Sporting Lisbon manager is getting a lot of recognition, which is a name you might throw in, but I haven't watched enough of Sporting mm. To comment, and you know me, I always keep it 100. If I haven't watched a player and someone asks me to comment, I'll say I don't know because I haven't watched them. I have to use my own eyes. But I'm my... going to watch them against Man City, by the way, in the Champions League. Yeah, yeah I, I think my, I think everyone knows my one. If I had a choice, is it Dan? Oh, shit, I forgot about him, you know? Yeah, I'm no. still not putting him in. Do you know what? I don't think I'm still putting him in my four. No, I think for me, no one comes close to Zidane in my eyes. If we so get you have Zidane, Zidane over Enrique? Yes. If we get what, Zidane, that football, you think Z- if might right tell Baze, I'm telling you, if we had it right, so I'm 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 a I'm an assistant at Man United. You're an assistant. Zidane's the coach. Luis Enrique is the coach. And me and you have to go against each other, and I'm sitting with Luis Enrique. You're sitting with Zidane. I beat your team. I trust Zidane more of a 30 year game season. And I trust him in knockout competitions because he's proven it. Because Zidane's won two league so titles. Enrique. So is Enrique over 38 games and... and Yeah, but... yeah, 38 so, games and Champions League and better football. I'll be honest, I'm not really, I don't really care about football like that. I, I trust Zidane more in terms of... I've seen this guy, when he's been shockingly bad in terms of injuries with Real Madrid, adapt. Tactically, and by getting something out of plays that no one thought that you could get. And this mm. guy was playing Vasquez at right back and getting something out of him. Asensio was actually looking like a half decent player under Real Madrid, under Zidane. Yeah. Sorry. We haven't seen the same quality from these players since, innit? And that's why I'm yeah. kind of be like, if I had a choice, it would be Zidane. Just because I know, obviously, we have winners like the man behind me in Ronaldo. He's worked with him before. Varane, he would command respect from the dressing room straight away because he has the aura. 
And at the same time, I think if Zidane comes in, Paul Pogba stays. I think Ooh. Paul. Pogba, I think Zidane's probably the only manager in the world that can keep Paul Pogba. Um. Yeah, looking at it, I don't see many other managers that could yeah mm. could come in and do that job. I think, think Pogba, Pogba stays. Though, by the way, because I can't lie, yeah, Matisse oh. asked me this today. And I'm slightly leaning towards that you stay now. Oh, okay. So what, mm. you 60-40 in terms of staying? No, no, I'm I'm 50-50. But it's 50% to United, 30% to PSG and 20% to Real. Okay. I'm going to go... Ooh. I think he's... Oh, I think he's off. I'm 70, right. 30 years off. The only reason I'm saying yeah, 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 that he stays is Real, I fully doubt they're going to pay the money. I think Mbappe Free. comes... No, no, Mbappe, in terms of his wages and stuff, isn't it? Oh, okay. Mbappe comes in, I think, they've already got Ferdi Valverde and Camavinga there as backup midfielders. They've been linked mm. with the likes of Drew Bellingham potentially next year to Shemeni and Graven Birch potentially this summer. Mm. Why then add another Paul Pogba there? Now, don't get me wrong, Paul Pogba is an unbelievable player. But I highly doubt Real are going to do it, innit? PSG, I look at them and I'm like, you could do anything and you, you want. You're stupid like that. You're going to mm. go sign Endembele. Why would you get... Don't get me wrong, Paul Pogba is better than Endembele. But Paul Pogba, Endembele, variety midfield. Is he the most balanced in the world? No. But would Paul Pogba love to play with PSG, at PSG? I think the answer is yes. I think... And I'm looking at United. Mm. I'll be honest. I think it's PSG or Real Madrid, like you said. But I just feel like he's 29 and he's got one more big contract in him. Mm. And if he ends his career looking back as a World Cup winner and he's staying at Manchester United like a bit too long, it's like, why didn't you go to Real Madrid? Or why didn't you go to the, the biggest team in your home country? Mm. I think he'll look back at that with regret. And I feel like Pogba, despite you know the potential of a new manager, potential of new signers, potential of winning the league with Ronaldo and so forth, I feel like he wants to win the Champions League of us this season, which, by the way, I've back, I've said it since day one about us winning the Champions League, even with Oli. I think stranger things have happened in football and it would be so typical that we win the Champions League when an interim comes in and he says, do you know what? Post-match press con- interview on the pitch. Paul, Paul, how does it feel to win the Champions League? Well, this is what I've dreamed about. And the I'm hazard thing. That, you know, he would say, say this, he'd be like, I'm thankful that, you know, I can say goodbye in the right way. So, Paul Pogba, mm. are you confirming that you're off? We'll see. And you know like, what I mean? It's what Hazard did for Chelsea in the, in the, yeah, in the yeah, back yeah, of the yeah, final. That's exactly final, that. Yeah. I think we could win the Champions League and Pogba just says, you know what? It's the perfect way to bow out. Like, fuck, I'm not going to lie. Fuck the league because he's won the Serie A. Yeah, he's yeah. got a league in his head. He wants the Champions League, bro. Big, big I, tournament. I, I hear that by the same time. I don't know, man. You love Pogba, though. I love Pogba. But I think yeah, you're I'll be honest. I'm not, love him, I'm, I'm not ready to let Paul Pogba go. Yeah, exactly. You've got sentiment, Bane. Sentiment yeah. on the shows. I've got to go aside. Really, no, no, but like... 29, one big contract. Are you... Okay, let me put you in a position. You've been in United five years. We've not really looked anywhere closer to winning the league. We're no, if I'm Paul Pogba, Chelsea. I'm leaving. I'm leaving. Yeah, so we I'm leave. leaving right now if I don't chance. But at the same time, I'm a Manchester United fan. Paul Pogba's been here for thick and thin with United. We've been crap. He's been our best player over the last five years. No one comes close in my eyes. He's won us trophies post Sir Alex Ferguson. Every single one of them other than the LVG FA Cup. Mm. And I still think he's one of the best midfielders in the world. And he's United. he came through the United Academy. So what, do you think the only way he stays is because his affiliation to the club, being in the academy and growing up through us? Yeah. I do think that has a massive part to play in it because I genuinely think Paul Pogba loves his club. I think the only reason he came back is because he loves his club. He want, and he wants No to win. one in this club has mm. said a bad word about it. No yeah. player has come out and said Paul Pogba is a virus in the dressing room. Mm-hmm. I think even like people like Scott McTominay have come out and said Paul Pogba is not the guy that you represent in the media. Every yeah. single player that's played football has praised Paul Pogba. Look what Declan Rice said about him. Mm. He's been in a pitch with Tony Cruz, Goretzka, Gundogan, whoever it was, and Boston. The best mm-hmm. on the pitch, the best midfielder on the pitch. Like I genuinely yeah. think this guy's this good, and that's why I'm like, <laughs> it's too hard to replace. One thing with Pogba, right? And you might disagree, you might agree. Mm. 
But in his five year spell here, the second stint, mm. I feel like in his whole five years, I'm excited most to see him the last this six season months. when he comes back. This last six months, it's I feel now, like he's got a point to prove in his head. Manchester United have got a coach of a bit of a plan and you know we've we've got a lot to still fight for. Mm. And I feel like Pogba thrives of fighting for things. When we were competing for top of the table last year, that was Pogba's best form, scoring away at Burnley, playing, being man of the match in big games. Big players turn injured. up in big games. Yeah, and then he got injured and, and our wheels fell off. When Pogba needs to step up, I feel like that's when he wants to thrive. And I, I think we've got a lot to fight for. And having him back just in time for the Champions League, I can't wait. Thanks. I'll be honest, we're beating Atletico Madrid. Click this all you want, yeah? Atletico Madrid yeah. got no chance against us. I, them. I, I've seen Atletico Madrid enough for the last couple of weeks. They're crap. And yeah, nice crap. They, got away away with Diego... it. they got away with it again yeah. on the weekend. Like Diego Simeone has lost every single thing that he's good at and that was his defensive record. That's what his yep. teams were known for. Yeah. He's lost that. You think I'm scared, I'm scared of your attack? I tell it to people. Dances when a when, when draw was made and people said, oh, who's harder, PSG or Atletico? I said, PSG are definitely harder. People said I was mad. I said, I'm nah, 100%. I'll be honest. I still would rather face PSG. <laughs> Because I think, oh, okay, see, see, I, I wouldn't personally, but I, I think, I think Atletico Madrid are definitely beatable. When you look at their defense mm. of Hermoso, Savage, Trippi has gone now. You know, like, you know, it's, it's not a team that's this great. This is the worst of black we've ever seen. Yeah, he's what, save percentage of like 48%. Yeah, it's 48 really down. I think, for I think it was 70, 71 last year. Yeah, like, yo, this is Kepa seasons for Chelsea. Mm. And, and you're up against the only person that has really scored a hat trick against you. In yeah. Cristiano Ronaldo. Ronaldo. Yeah, your boy needs to thrive. Can I ask you a question, though? Yeah. As much as we think we'll be Atletico, if you're Ragnick, and I, I said this to 15 yesterday when we were speaking about Pogba, 4-3-3, mm. three, three, where do you play him? Left of the front three or left-hand side of the front uh, midfield three? Who pulled Pogba? Yeah. Uh, a left-hand side or a front three? Oh, okay. So you're going left hand side of the front three. Mm. Okay, I knew this would be a good question. The okay. only reason I say that, and I've said this for how many years now, a midfield three containing Bruno Fernandes and Paul Pogba does not work in my eyes. I just don't mm. think both those players are disciplined enough to play that role in the nicest possible way. And I don't think we have a six that's good enough. And I always say this when Pep done it, he had these two full, uh, wingers staying out wide and these two fullbacks coming inside. I don't think we really have touchdown wingers like that to play that, innit? Yeah. And that's why I'm like with this situation here. Um, we have to play him on the left-hand side if we were to kind of do anything, in my eyes. Mm, 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 mm. Uh, do you know what? I think it's more but, like... A... But then, if, if you had a choice of Pogba Bruno in one midfield position, in a Champions League game, I'm choosing Paul Pogba. So do you think if he plays centre midfield, you know Bruno's going to start, by the way. Mm. So do you think Bruno and Pogba, I know we thought of Matic when they played the 4-3-3 when we had that post-season lockdown form with Oli. Do lockdown you think dance. Bruno and Pogba can play as eights together? No. Yeah, fair. Like, okay. if that happens and works, I would think Ralph is a genius. Because I'll yeah. be honest, in terms of managers in football that I can see doing that, very few of I don't know who. Maybe Pep. Do you know what? It's mad because I don't. I agree with right. So I agree with you, mm. but I disagree in terms of where I want to play him. So I agree with your logic. I think you're bang on right, but I want to play him centre midfield. And and so are you the benching reason, then Bruno? Ah, uh, the, the 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 worry for me is playing Bruno and Popper together, which I can see is your worry straight mm. away because I feel like that can get exposed a bit, and that's why he played McTominay and Fred just for more of the security. But for me, Pogba, getting the ball on the left, and I know we got assists against Leeds and he had like seven assists in two, three games, whatever it was. I just feel like the way Ragnick wants to play with them sort of explosive players, I don't really want Pogba picking up the ball on the left-hand side and having only one area to play the ball into. And that's on the left-hand side, you're only going to come in because there's no space behind you because it's going to be the throw-in. So mm -hmm. it limits his sort of ability on the pitch to affect the game because either crossing it or passing it inside. I feel like if Pogba's getting the ball in midfield, like I said to you, where McTominay can ball carry, Pogba is a great ball carrier, even though I know he's a bit heavier now with the injuries. Pogba, when he beats that press or the pitch opens up, to have the options of, you know, passing it right, passing it left and passing it down the middle. I feel like our, our attackers right now are not making the runs that they probably would want to make the run. We saw Alanga get the ball from Fred against mm -hmm. Brentford. 
that's a one-off. But I feel like Ronaldo, if he knows Pop was getting that ball centrally, Ronaldo's on the shoulder of the defender and he's making that dart where sometimes he comes deep. He doesn't need to come as deep because he knows that like, Pogba is probably going to find me. Sancho, Rashford, whoever it is, they can make them sort of runs in behind the defenders because Pogba can find me. So I'm excited for Pogba to come back. I want him to play centrally, but that's only if the balance is right. So if the balance isn't right, I, I don't ever want to see him on the left, but it might be the only way because Elanga's there at the moment. Sancho's not cutting it. Rashford's it, trying to find form. So I see the point for him on the left. But yeah, but it's me. I love Pogba centrally because I think that's, where he goes to Real Madrid and plays, that's where he goes to PSG and plays. And if he's got six months left, let's play him in the central, dominating, getting forward, and mm. you know, showing him, showing himself. Nah, it's a hard one. This is what the, the but then, has to make. I think if Pogba plays centrally, then Bruno gets dropped, and I know people are not going to like that. But he's I, can't growing. Like I, said, I, I think Bruno is growing in this team now. I, I think he's doing relatively well in that number eight role. But at the same time, if I had a choice of one Pogba or Bruno in the number eight, I'm choosing Paul Pogba because I've seen him do it in the bigger games. I've seen him playing Champions League games before. Yeah. We haven't seen Bruno Fernandes playing Champions League knockout games. Mm. We like Everyone criticizes Bruno's record in big games. Yeah. And everyone criticizes him losing the ball too many times. Like In those bigger games, fine margins. This is what I always say. Big games, you can't make many mistakes. Yeah. Like we saw it against Liverpool, for example. Bruno Fernandes wrongly presses the keeper. Midfield wide open, bang, seven passes, go. Mm -hmm. You do that in the Champions League against Bayern Munich when they got people like Lucas Hernandez, Alfonso Davies down the left hand side, Kimmich yeah. progressing the ball, Thomas Muller finding space, Lewandowski up front. That's literally five passes and that's a goal. Mm. That's why so, I was still. Okay. So say Atletico Madrid then. So say, we'll, so say we'll play like a Bayern Munich where they're probably quite quick, they're quite mm. quick in transition. You probably wouldn't really want Pob essentially, but you might because then you saw against Barcelona when they actually got space to counter-attack, they can open up the pitch a bit against Bayern. But say we're playing Atletico Madrid. I think because the way Atletico play, I do think that Pob could play centrally. I think it depends on the type of game. Well, so Pob and Bruno together? I think they could play centrally against Athletic. They, they probably won't because they want some mm. McTominay and Fred in there because they're dogged and Atletico Madrid are dogged. But if we're at home to Atletico, I do feel like we could impose ourselves like Liverpool did in the group stages and play Bruno and Pogba and say, fuck it. Sorry about my language. We're going for this. I think they could the bar be very, very scared. If that ever happens, I want someone like Alanga playing. I'm sorry. Like, say what you want about Langa, Langa in terms of lack of quality. I know at least mm. he's going to help back and try it back. And I, I really, really need that if I'm having Paul Pogba and Bruno Fernandes in midfield because I'll be scared. Okay. Yeah. I so you're worried, about, depends, you're worried about the tracking backside. Yeah. Like, it depends massively on the wingers then. Mm, but I still mm, wouldn't mm. take that risk. Okay. And I, like, don't get me wrong, if Ralph takes that risk, I'll be interested to see how it works. But at the same time, I'll be hella scared. Yeah. But what are you saying yeah. in the Champions League? Are you confident? Because I can't lie, the more I think about it, Listen, yeah, anything could happen. Are you about this game or are you about the whole thing? Whole thing, yeah. Because so, I'll be honest, I don't know how many teams in Europe I actually fear right now. Listen, what Baines, it's like you're listening to me months later. What no, did no, I but, tell you when you no, were no, 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 no. What, no, but no, you no. said this on the Oli. That was Bro, stupidity. It doesn't matter. Same players, no, same no, players. No. My point stands. Can you admit, I did say to you about we could win the Champions League and I don't fear anyone apart from Man City. And probably Liverpool, I said, didn't I? Did I say no, that? No, no, but you, you said it on the Oli. That's complete stupidity because we no, weren't winning. Did I say that? Did I say that? You did. There's no but. No, no, I did. And this is what you're realizing. Man City are a team I don't want to face in the Champions League because they'll beat us over two legs. Liverpool probably beat us over two legs when I look at it. Other teams, Bayern, yes, they score loads of goals and everyone can love I think we get a little game. Good coach. Yeah, we could win one game. Nagelsmann, Bayern Munich, I've seen them flapping and conceding low of the goals this season. Mm. They're playing in the Bundesliga. We could beat them. PSG, we can beat them. Barcelona, then they're out. Juventus are not the same Juve as normal. Chelsea, I do think, you know, they're I actually going to beat them. over two legs. So when you're talking about teams, I fear, yes, it's only Man City and Liverpool, I'd say slightly, because when you look at Liverpool, forget they sometimes 5 0 or whatever. When I, thought, I, I would say Bayern just because I think Bayern is just so efficient. Like you know, like everyone always talks about German efficiency. Nah, stuff. nah, 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 nah. I, I don't. I'm not fearing them. Not with Nicolas Saul and Upper Meccano centre back because the next time I do Sacco. No, I'm not fearing nah. them. We can go there and get goals. We can beat them. 
And they no, I, I, I think else. we will get goals, but I just think we will then concede four at the same time. Listen, I, I, I think we can win it. I know people in the comments are going to cook me. One hour, four minutes, 22 seconds. I know. I think Manchester United can win the Champions League. We've got Pogba coming back. We've got Bruno. We've got, you know, even Sancho to pick up for him. We've got Greenwood, Ronaldo. We've got Varane. You know, we've got De Gea. We've still got seven good players in that starting eleven. If we get the balance right and it's 90 minutes of football, anything can happen. I understand people say, if you get Real Madrid, you're going to get absolutely dominated. Cruz, Modric and everything like that. I understand that teams are better than us. However, football just doesn't always work like that. Mm. The best team doesn't always win the Champions League. You could go back for the last 10 years. The best team... Chelsea won the best the team Champions last year. Like in no, terms of they the players they have. There you go. At all. Like, no one thought Tuchel was going to come in and win the Champions mm. League. Let's be real. And sometimes as well, the draw works in your favour. Buying and buying, buying could be... Um, well, who have they got? The Salzburg. easy game. I don't know. Salzburg. Bayern could win. PSG have got Real Madrid. One of them are going. Real Madrid could mm. only go, go on and get Bayern Munich in the next round. Liverpool could draw Man City in the next round. All of a sudden, two of them are gone. The competition opens up. So, Or oh, you never know. Happened. Salzburg beat Bayern. We, be, we play Salzburg next round. That's it. That's, and that, and that's that should be a semi-final. Final place, and you could be in the semi-final. And, yeah. and, and this is the thing. When people say, oh, you're not the best team. I know we're not the best team. But there's a lot of decimals that make up a cup competition. Like the draw. Just 90 minutes. Way goal rule is gone. Like... Do you know what I mean? VAR, there's just always these little things. And, and with the way our season's gone, Oli going, Ragnick coming in, it wouldn't surprise me if we go you know, to semi-finals. You know one thing I'll say? I, I just think football works in a funny way. Like, it, it, stories happen, isn't it? And this mm. story right here, this man coming back to win what us the first do? major trophy, what would you post do? Alex Ferguson. What would you do if he scored the win on one of the Champions League? Like, generally, what would you do? Would uh, you... I don't know. I'll, I'll genuinely cry. I'll genuinely cry on stream. Now, I'm telling you, if this man comes here and wins us a Champions League this year, no one can ever touch me or talk to me again after the amount of stick I get every single day from backing. What if he, wait, wait, so if he, if he scores, I get it. What if he does nothing between now and the final, just plays 90 minutes, but we win? I'm still celebrating shamelessly. Okay. Because yeah. I'll be honest here, you see with Ronaldo as well, I do think this is what people don't get right now with Ronaldo. Oh, Even though he might be dropping in the pockets and West Ham. No, no, no. This. No, no, no. But he did do that. A very good point. You said it, not me. There's something called gravity. Yeah. There's something called gravity. And I learned it. Apparently, it's a basketball phrase in terms of sometimes, I'll be honest, I don't know if this happens with this certain player, but LeBron James apparently is one of the best basketball players ever. Mm. And because to stop him, you might need more than one player. So two or three players gravitate towards LeBron James, creating space for other players. And I do think at times that is the case with Cristiano Ronaldo in my eyes. Players gravitate towards Cristiano Ronaldo because of the fear factor that he has. And that creates space for other players. And we saw it against West Ham, for example. Two players came towards Cristiano Ronaldo because they're scared that he's going to get in shooting range. And more often than not, Cristiano Ronaldo is one of the best shooters football's ever seen. Goal scorer is football's ever seen. Factually. It's not an opinion. The fact. So, yeah. I shared something for you. Where's your goal? Nah. What you're talking yeah. about. So, Ronaldo coming in and Nalanga scores, but he drags the three defenders in here. You see the arrows? See, I haven't even seen this. Yeah, oh, you're gonna get gassed out. Look, uh, Annie, no, look at me do, look at me do Ronaldo prep for you. There's one more, no, no, but, 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 but it's true though. Like, you just proved my point, yeah. Ronaldo, there, and there's another one here. Um, the second one where he drags in here the defender and then flicks mm. it on for Bruno, creating a space for the others, yeah. Like, this is basically what I'm trying to explain gravity plays gravitate towards Cristiano Ronaldo, creating up openings for other plays. And Bruno Fernandes, one thing I'll say, is very, very good at third-man runs. And mm. we've started to see a bit more recent. And that's one thing Paul Pogba was very good at under Ole Gunnar Solskjaer for the first in. Remember when Ole yeah. Gunnar Solskjaer was caretaker? Paul Pogba's yeah. late runs into the box. Deadly. Because mm -hmm. I've always said this, and Goretzka does this very, very well. Late runs into the box are the hardest thing to defend. Yeah, yeah. Van, I, think, I think Van Der Beek's brilliant them as well. Yeah. Hardest thing mm. to defend. Because you just don't know what's coming. Because say yeah. if the ball's out wide and the player's coming in, running towards you, you're not seeing that. You're seeing the ball. Yeah. 
And that's or what, that's what I feel like Paul Bowen can give us in a three-man midfield. He'd be able to maybe do mm. that. If, if him and... It depends. You know what it is? If, if him and Bruno can have positional discipline, mm. it could work. If just whether they do that. And also having Tomane or whoever it is, Matic, behind him. Because I don't think Fred would work with Fred, Bruno and Pogba. I feel like it's a bit too chaotic. Mm. But, um, yeah, I, I think having them third-round runs, like you said, with Pogba, Van der Beek, obviously maybe we get some late minutes. It could be key, and, and that, them images there, I knew you'd like them. Yeah, it just showed that the space that Ronaldo could could create. Mm. And that's where that's when I said, if we had a Ronaldo, Martial, Sancho front three working, maybe not last season, but overall, Martial is a very, very good finisher. Yeah, you could argue he's best. Like some people say, he's a striker. Some people say he's a winger. Combine mm. them both. You have a left forward picking mm-hmm. up those little pockets of space, then score, making those late runs into the box. When Ronaldo has all the attention, could have worked out very, very well. Yeah. Do, okay. So before we wrap it up, yeah, with Marshall going on loan, because mm. we'll touch it on my show tomorrow as well. Do you feel like he could come back under one of those managers and get another run, or do you feel like his head is like right, win or lose at Sevilla, play shit or play good? I want to leave. Uh. I think it's a difficult one, isn't it? Because I can't lie. I looked at him the other day, that video that you posted in the group chat of him walking mm. off the pitch. And I'm not saying... I, I just think mentally that does, is massive for a player. Yeah. Like, you came on, made an impact, and you're still getting booed. You're still not getting yeah. the reception that you right, you deserve, let's be honest, for winning us a game. Yeah. Why would you then want to play for a club when the fans exactly. were hit? If he came on as a sub and they were singing his name like Anti Marshall mm. scores again, yeah. I think that would have made him think. Do you know what? They understand that I just want to. Like he ha- he has happy. that. Like you see when Marshall smiles. Let's be honest, everyone smiles. Yeah, because you never see him smile. And mm. seeing him up to after making an impact was kind of sad, didn't it? Yeah, it was. It hurt me, man. I'll be honest with you. Like being my favorite player, I think to have that sort of reception and then to, to play an impart, uh, play a part in the goal and the woman comes over to see if you're all right and then you're like mm. moaning because of the Shretford. I feel like... The, the Shretford end as well. Yeah, I feel like the straw's been done. Like, as much as even if he came back next season and played under a new manager, all it would take is a few bad performances and the monkey's on his back again. So, mm. if he goes to another club... Like you'll get racially abused. Him. Yeah, it could even... Yeah, do you know what I mean? Racially abused. And I just feel like... I feel like with Martial, yeah, and this is from the get-go, and the same with Pogba, I feel like these are two players that have just never been appreciated wholly by mm. fans. And that's the reason you've seen up and down performances, you've seen the media get on their back, you've seen the pressure be more on them than it is on others. I just don't think they've ever been fully appreciated. And these are top, top footballers. And I, I think we're going to hurt when both of them potentially leave in the summer. That could be Martial, Cavani and Pogba, among a couple others, leaving. And I feel like they're good characters, they're liked in the dressing room. And they have great footballing ability and it's going to be hard to replace them. So I feel like Martial, his head is elsewhere. I think his missus as well, his partner, wants to leave the UK as well. Um, so I don't believe whatever the new manager does is going to be able to convince him to stay. I think the only manager that could potentially convince him out of all of them is Pochettino. And the reason I say that is because he's wanted him at Spurs when he was there. And he still wanted him at PSG. He saw links on the deadline day last year. So I feel like Poch likes him. And Lopetegui, of course, if he came from Sevilla, would be like, well, I'm going to manage Man United now. You've played for me here. I'm going to make you, you know, one mm. of my main guys. So I feel like Luis Enrique and Ten Hag would be happy to say, OK, you don't want to play for me? Off you go. So, yeah. Facts, facts, facts. But I think that's probably like the perfect way mm. to wrap up the show, isn't it? Make sure yeah, you guys like the video. Man. But I wanted to touch on one last thing here. Mm. How clean do these jackets look? Yeah, yeah, they're sick. No I lie, these like... jackets are so, so yeah. nice. Like, fair play to Adidas, fair play to United. You've done an unbelievable job on this. I wonder how long they'll be online for. Yeah, they look sick though, man. You that, can wear I, them I, I, By the way, I'm not working for MUTV right now or Manchester United. I'm just saying as a fan, these look very, very clean. Yeah. They but are I think it costs clean, yeah. £110 and you have to pre-order them. Okay. But the only thing with that online is well, you have to make sure you get the right size. I hate mm. that stuff. Order it comes too big, but no, they they are they are top class. I really like them actually. Mm. Yeah, but that, that that's all I wanted to say. And I thought those look yeah, very man. very nice. United done a great job, so fair play with that. Yeah, but yeah, make Hopefully. sure you guys like. Yeah, go on. 
Oh, I was going to say, hopefully, obviously, winter break, we come back and we just win games. Middlesbrough and FA Cup. Yeah, Friday night as well. Mm. Oh, which is good because I swear to God, the amount of Monday night games we played recently has been mad. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Relax. And but I can't yeah, lie, people... on, the week, on the weekend, it did feel good. Playing on a Saturday, winning, and then watching everyone else. Calm. Yeah, yeah, it did. It did. Three o'clock game. I actually don't mind mm. three o'clock games. I had it on the radio as well. It was so exciting, to be fair. Mm. But people, make sure you like and subscribe to Statman Baines doing great things, big things. Chaffer Tunnel as well. That's where you can find my channel. You can the link will be in the title. Yeah, in the title. So please make sure you come over, subscribe and like. And um, yeah, man, we just keep you giving giving you them views. But one thing I just want to end it on is that my guy has left the club. The pressure is now on you and you only because I'll be watching Spain. I'll be watching Sevilla. And every time he scores, Statman's going to know about it. No, no, but I think... It doesn't prove anything in my eyes. His time at United was coming to an end. It was probably best for all parties that he left to better his career for the next six months. Okay, just uh, for you. Okay, last second, last second. Mm. Do you want Martial to do well? Yeah, because I want him back for the new manager. Because I think okay, he has cool. a place in the side. Okay, cool, cool. I cool. said he had a place in the side on the raft, though. Okay, yeah, so like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, mm. well, I love him, of course. So, okay, you want him to do well. All right, fair. Good, I like that. Because I think it's kind of similar to Jesse. Like doing him bad doesn't help any single player person in this situation. Mm, mm. Like it doesn't help Sevilla. It doesn't help United. It doesn't help Martial. He performs yeah. well. It literally helps every single party. Whether that's United selling him eventually increases yeah. the fee. Him doing well gives him the confidence. Maybe he wants to come back or maybe he wants to move elsewhere. Yeah. We'll see what happens. Yeah, perfect. But yeah, big up everyone for watching. Make sure you guys like the video, comment, subscribe and all that good stuff. And we will be back 